Uh, good evening, everyone. And uh, this is our uh, May edition of the Memphis Astrophotography Group. And um, last month, we, I think we kind of ended up the uh, meeting by discussing the idea of buying some telescope time and uh, using that to get uh, data files we needed and process some images. And uh, a small group of us got together after that meeting and discussed it some more. And uh, the more we reviewed it, the more we realized that uh, buying telescope time can get really expensive really quick. <laughs> So, and, and we weren't quite sure that uh, we were ready to um, commit those kind of funds, at least not the Memphis Astronomical Society itself. And uh, so um, what we, uh, what Merrill had done, which I'm very grateful for, is he started looking at um, play, uh, people that are offering up uh, pre-collected data sets for, uh, for use. And he found uh, a couple at least, and one that is uh, uh, we've been looking at. And uh, we sent out an email with uh, some information. But Martin Pugh's, uh, uh, I, and I haven't looked in detail at his equipment, uh, Merrill has, but he's got some really nice equipment and he's doing some really nice imaging. And he's got a lot of stuff from the Southern Hemisphere, which makes it that much more interesting since it's stuff we can't necessarily go out and get ourselves here. So um, we have come up with the idea of, uh, there are actually uh, at least a couple of us in this group that are, have volunteered to uh, purchase some of these data sets. And uh, so we've already picked up two. Uh, we've got the, um, oh, now I'm gonna go blank, the uh, Omega Centauri. And uh, we've got the Tarantula Nibbler. Now the Omega Centauri, I got to admit, was, uh, was an impulse thing. I couldn't help myself. It's actually my favorite thing to look at. Uh, I got a glimpse of it one time uh, down at uh, French Camp uh, at Rainwater Observatory. They've got a 30-inch daub down there. And Omega gets just above the horizon, southern horizon uh, in uh, March, April time frame. And I was down there for uh, a thing looking. So I'm standing flat-footed on the ground looking in the eyepiece of a 30-inch daub, which, you know, uh, Normally you have to get on top of a 12 foot ladder to, to look through the eyepiece, but this is looking straight out across the horizon and an Omega Centauri looked like it was about that big in the eyepiece. And it felt like you could reach out and touch it. You know, it was just absolutely incredible view. And uh, it's been one of my favorite things to look at uh, since then followed only shortly by M13. Uh, so, uh, so when I saw that Omega Centauri was there, I just said, oh, I gotta have that. So we have that, uh, I also picked up the Tarantula Nebula, Nebula, and I'll be in the process of downloading those image files later this evening. Uh, there's 90 of them to be processed and worked with, uh, but we're also going to continue uh, this idea of, of uh, demonstrating and teaching image processing uh, in these forums. And uh, uh, I think we can develop some lessons. Of course, Ann uh, Viano uh, is a college professor, so she's excellent at putting together lesson plans <laughs> and breaking this up into modules. Uh, so over the next few months, we'll be doing that and uh, uh, demonstrating uh, processing these images. One of the things we'd like to accomplish tonight is maybe go through some more of these uh, data sets that are available and pick 
at least uh, two or three more, maybe go ahead and rank uh, five or six of them, and uh, we will go ahead and get started purchasing two or three more of them anyway, uh, and um, see where it goes. And these data sets will, our intention is to make them available for practice and learning uh, in these uh, uh, in, in these forums, and uh, I, I, you know, if you haven't sent me uh, an email to get uh, access to our uh, cloud drive, uh, you know, feel free to do so. I'll set you up your own directory there. Uh, they're set up so that uh, you can, uh, all the other members can see what's in your directory, but they can't make changes um, and. Of course, you can. Uh, we can do the same for you. And then, if we have a common work uh, directory we want to set up or something, we can do that. Whatever, some something more public. But in any case, uh, I've got a four terabyte cloud drive that we can store all this data on easily. So, um, and I guess with that. Uh, Meryl, what do we what should we do next? Well, I ask a question: Who has Dix Insight? Just, I mean, just okay. Two, three. Yeah. You, they're unfortunately they, they don't sell it as a for a group. They just they're just not in their bailiwick. They sell it as individuals, and it's I think it's two hundred thirty euros. So I don't know where, the, where Gary and Dan and Scott and the rest of us uh, are in their you know, in your learning process with astrophotography, but <clears throat> Fix Insight seems to be the world gold standard on processing images. So if you're yeah. going to do it, yeah. astrophotography centric, right? You know, so that's right. all it is. <clears throat> there may be some scientific functions too, but. Um, so consider if you're going to be, you know, joining us, you can just watch us or, you know, you can get your own copy or yeah, get your own copy. You can, you can borrow. I mean, they'll, they'll have a temporary license. I guess borrow's not the right word. The temporary short-term license that you can use for a month or maybe 60 days. I forget which. Alan, did you, did you start off with the, with the short-term one? All right. I think it was 30 days. 30 days, okay. Yeah. But 230 euros, which is what, 260 or 70 dollars, is not terribly expensive compared to Photoshop. Photoshop is really expensive. Yeah. So. Oh, um, and, and and I've been tickled with it. I picked it up. Uh, I, I got the temporary license, but once I, once I realized it, um, Pretty easy to use, uh, not inter not entirely straightforward. You'll have to learn uh, its layout and stuff. But once you start seeing how they do things, it becomes a little easier to to follow. When my telescope finally came and my rate restrictions restrictions finally went away, so I'm hoping to be able to get some images. Now I'll have a chance to buy it. Ah, very good. What did you get? What did you get? Yeah. Uh, an Edge HD 9.25. Cool. And then a 2600 MC. You'll, you'll need some processing software. Right. <laughs> oh, by the way, too, and, I, and I'll uh, throw this out there. It, uh, a, a person I work with that lives in the uh, Washington, D.C. area um, just told me the other day that he's got a Celestron 14 inch. Um, oh gosh, I wish I remember the uh, model number, but it's essentially an eight thousand uh, dollar telescope and mount. The whole shooting match, uh, all uh, go to uh, all that stuff. Uh, only a few years old. It's uh, uh, there. Uh, version of a uh, correct out to the edge of the field of view. Um, and I, I told him that I, we were talking, he wants to sell it. And I told him 
that uh, you know he he should at least be able to get basically half of its retail price uh, in the used market, and he was tickled with that idea. So, uh, so essentially, if uh, if if you know if you're interested or know somebody that is uh, for four thousand dollars, they could probably pick up a. a a good use telescope. He's going to be coming to Nashville in the fall. I'm probably going to drive up there and meet him to pick it up and uh, bring it here and either sell it or I'm, I don't need another telescope, but, <laughs> but, but I might have to. <laughs> you can put it on Ast Astromart, which is a selling, you know, peer to peer type thing. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, I'm, I, but I'd like, I'd love for uh, somebody, I'd love for one of my friends to be able to get it because <laughs> it's going to be a heck of a price. So it's a long, long focal length for a 14 inch. Is oh, yeah. it like 4,000? I'd say 35, 3,600, but it's, it's long, very long. Yeah. It's, so they're, you know, it's good, great for galaxy season. Yeah. A flat field and a field uh, flattener of so. Yeah. Well, I, I, what kind of mount would you need for that? <laughs> it's coming with the mount. Oh, okay. Really nice mount. Uh, I, I, well, let me. Four thousand for everything. Yeah. And the EQ six R Pro is not good enough for the fourteen. I don't believe. Me, uh, it's 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 a thirty nine hundred and ten millimeter. So it's basically four thousand millimeter uh, focal length. Twenty eight hundred with the reducer. This is a CGE Pro fourteen hundred. That's the model number. And here, let me share my screen real quick. Uh, he sent me a picture of uh, part of it today. He's going to send some more pictures tomorrow. The question is, what is the mount? It's uh, CGE. Uh, here, here it is. It looks serious. Yeah, it's it's their top of the line stuff. All the wiring goes through the mount. Uh, and then here are his eyepieces, and I have that eyepiece. Darn. <clears throat> I paid more than 4000 for my mount and my uh, scope combined. So yeah. that's definitely a good price. I think so. I, and of course, I should get pictures of the scope tomorrow, but uh, uh, it's going to be a heck of a deal for somebody. So anyway. Um, all right. Well, let me let me bring up. Uh, so what we, well, like I said, what we'd like to do this evening, let me find that uh, list, is get through a list of, uh, I'm sorry, I should have done this ahead of time. I assume everybody got the email that, that you sent out with the, some of the examples of some of them. Right, I would hope so. Rick. Quick, Dan Weiner, quick question. Uh, when you buy these uh, collections of photos, what is the uh, usage requirements as far as the, is it I'm buying it as an individual or a group or is so, there a restriction on it? So I think we should be um, careful. Uh, I, I wouldn't. Uh, uh, I wouldn't want to go publishing uh, these images and claiming any rights to them. Um, you know, produce your results, share it on Facebook, whatever. I wouldn't necessarily talk about where you got them, <laughs> but uh, I, I don't think um, that uh, Mr. Pugh would be upset with what we're doing. Uh, I think if you were going to, uh, if you wanted to use these, and I honestly haven't looked at what his requirements are for usage rights anyway. I mean, once you buy the data sets, I th what you produce with those, I think is your property. 
right? Uh, so, uh, but I also don't think he intends for these data sets to be shared with the world. And, and so uh, let's don't share these data files with anyone outside our learning group. And our intention will be that we are using these to teach and learn with and uh, not for any kind of profit motive or anything like that with the uh, hope being that uh, as you become proficient with these and you find one you're particularly fond of in his data sets maybe you'll go buy one of them yourself so that's kind of the kind of the, uh, our approach i think yeah Does that make uh, sense? I think you can use. I mean, I've seen him. I've seen him used. As long as he gave credit. I mean, the Arizona Starman. What's his name? His last name. My name. Miller. I don't remember his first name. But he 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 will post his on the SBIG groups or something. But he gives credit to Martin. So there you go. In fact, in fact, the uh, if you look at the the first Galaxy NGC two fifty three. That's that is one of Martin's. Go ahead and, if, you, if you can do it, if you can do it at home, click, click get it, get it loaded up, and and take a look at it. Um, this, okay. Well, that's that's the list of all 31 of this for sale. But show it. But get, see if you can load up to uh, NGC 253. What's well, from the, from that letter that uh, that we? That, oh, okay, sorry. You're not gonna get it from his site. He won't. He doesn't publish them. <laughs> yeah, I did think that was rather interesting. Yeah, that is, that is weird, but he, he'll send you a copy of it, but it's like he doesn't want to. I don't know. It's his business. It's that one there, right there. Yes. See, <clears throat> Bernard, Bernard Miller. I mean, that's one of the, the quality of data of, in, of the individual images. If it, it, all I've seen is the Omega Centauri, but the quality of the images, if they're the same, it's just spectacular. And really aids the processing. Because you don't have, have lots of noise. And uh, I mean, you, you can see the, the quality of the output. But you see, if you scroll, if you scroll on down, you'll see how he gave, gave Martin credit. Um, uh, yeah, when I, when I looked on Martin's website, it looks like that particular set of images was 25 hours worth of <laughs> HA and RGB. Uh, it was well, 17 inch telescope. The tarantula nebula that Rick bought was 28 and a half hours, so it's wow. really good quality. <laughs> Nine yeah. files, seven different filters. That one should be a fun. And Anne was the one who was really fell in love with that one. Yeah. yeah. So, so one of the one of the things we, we did want to do is is at least choose two more uh, tonight from the seven or eight of us that are on the group. Let me show you real quick. Uh, so this is my. Uh, Did that quick? Yeah this this is this is my Omega Centauri that after Merrill got through with it, uh, real, I think he did. The data sets were so clean he was able to knock this out in a in real quick hurry. Uh, About forty five minutes or so, but <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll get the, if we get the chance tonight, we, let's just go through what we did the other day. Okay, and, uh, that would be a. All right. In fact, there here are the data set. That's just tarantula. I'm in the process of downloading it. So it's 90 files. And where did that letter go? So what we need to do is pick out uh, some more. And um, have y'all had it? Has anyone had a chance to look at that email? And have you uh, made any other? Uh, I have. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Alan. Well, do you want to uh, kick us off here? I know. I, can, I, know, I, can, I know. I have. I have. Go ahead, Meryl. 
Well, actually, I, I'll take notes, so I'll just keep track of what you're saying. Oh, oh okay, okay. I know, I know. All of those were just, man, beautiful images. <laughs> um, but I kept getting drawn back to that the one, the galaxy we just looked at, the NGC two sixty three. Um, out of all the galaxies that were there, I think I think my next one was that Centaurus A. Uh, but the NGC two fifty three. Uh, that, yeah, that's just this is rich. Something it? to me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, when you're when you're flipping through and seeing all the other galaxies, that one stands out. Uh, well, that's a good example. <laughs> Martin Hughes' work that Bernard did, it's just spectacular. The detail is just, just amazing. And, and the other one that keeps dry, uh, bringing me back to it in the nebula section uh, was that uh, NGC 6726. And you may have to get on his website to see that one. Again, he doesn't uh, go ahead. Just, yeah, look at that. Good. Now, I, I, I'd put in, even without seeing which one that is, a second for it, because we have a, a, a Gawker cluster. You've got a galaxy. We yeah. want something different. So the third one should be a nebula. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah, so that one looks like it had dark nebula. It had the reflection. It had... Uh, had a little bit of everything in it. <laughs> um, and actually, the one that was on this site, even uh, off to the side, had a little star cluster. So weird diffraction spikes. <laughs> or is that a double star? I think that might be a double star. <laughs> star. Yeah. Find it on flight again. Let's see. Little, cute little cloud. But right. I didn't, didn't think his site had that little diffraction spike on it. <laughs> so NGC 6726. 6726, yeah. So, what do you think of the row? I can't pronounce it. Ofuchi. The one next to the, on the, on the, uh, next to the NGC 253. Is that what, the, yeah, that looks like it. That's it. Yeah, that, that, I like the, the, the variation in color. Browns, you don't see a lot of. Well, that may be how we map them as opposed to real color. I bet you that's real color. Really? That, is that the three panel one that he's talking about? Or that you're three panel one? Or is it the one right at the top of the nebulas, the row? Yeah, like row yes. three panel. <laughs> Something like that. And, and that's that's similar to what you're what you were speaking about on 6726. Got that. A lot of variety there. You know, maybe I just need to pop these up on the screen here real quick. Let me do that. Again, these are these are not Martin's work except the 253 because. I just searched for the best one I could find on the internet when I put it in there. That one we've got. Yeah. Yeah, you can probably just pull up Mark, uh, Martin's website. Martin doesn't have uh, examples. He just has the names of them. Oh, I see a bunch of uh, examples on his site. <laughs> Where's that at? Martin Pugh astrophotography dot space. Yeah. Oh, those are the ones he sells. Right. All right. Okay. He probably does. You see, 
it's in a different place than than the data sets. Yes, he oh. does. Set as or if you, yeah, click on Nebula right there. Let's see if I can find it again. Oh, yeah, good. This is that. Those are. I'm sure he sells those. Not as a data set, but as finished. Oh, 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 okay. I got what you're saying. But that's cat's paw. Uh, Will. That's interesting. That that to me appears a false color. I mean, it's I, mapped. It. This looks evil. <laughs> <laughs> this, this looks like something that needs to be in Guardians of the Galaxy or something, <laughs> where the bad people live. Kind of like that, and it's something. The detail is just amazing. You know, I, and I guess that's kind of the thing. Even if it's false color, it's like it's just incredible detail. You know, we've got a young man that posts a lot of stuff on our Facebook page that. Uh, in my opinion, I, he does, he does, I think he buys a lot of data sets. And in my opinion, he oversaturates a lot of the colors. He, they're over exaggerated, but you know, our, it, it's hard to claim science in a lot of this. And some people try to, but it's, uh, you know, you're basically making visible uh, spectrum that's not normally visible to the human eye in a lot of cases to you know, certainly not at the same levels so calling it science is, is tough no matter what you do I think <laughs> so where are we at Meryl we've got uh, we've got two or three nebula picked right no, I didn't. I didn't. Uh, yeah, we we didn't agree on any of those. Okay, so we got Ro Ofuchi. We got sixty-seven twenty-six. That's the only ones I've captured. Okay, sixty-seven twenty-six. Sixty-seven twenty-six. Ro Ofuchi. All right, come on. Let's uh, speak out. Scott, Dan, Gary. Yeah. I was I was kind of partial to um, NGC sixty three fifty seven. It may be another. There may be some false color, but uh, that one was just kind of spectacular to me. Um, Ro Ofiuchi, or however it's pronounced, um, it is equally spectacular. But that one, that one, we we it, it's kind of low, but we can get from here. And I know in the email we talked about looking at stuff that we we couldn't necessarily see from here. Um, so that would, be my, that would be my only thought about Roe, but it, it is it is absolutely spectacular. You know, I think this one, I, uh, I, I, I like the, uh, the color here as well. And I, I don't know if it's oversaturated or not, but the browns and... Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, something... It wasn't the right colors, but it sure looks pretty. <laughs> to get the data, you get to put your own colors to it. Well, I, you know, it's kind of the point, and maybe that's the learning uh, experience is that we're able to show that, you know, you can do this or you can do something that's much more subtle or uh, do something that's more scientifically accurate. Um, I'm not sure how you do that, but I'm sure that uh, we can work toward those gold. But yeah, that one was my my second choice there, and then I think my third was um, that Gabrielle Mistral Nebula in the Gem Cluster. I guess it's the second one on that sheet that you printed out. There is a real pretty one. Three, 
and the one that had the gym cluster in it was a, a wider field of view than this one. The gym cluster, I'm not sure I know what that is. <sighs> You know, yeah, I tell you, it's on his website too. Okay. Oh yeah. It was on that Martin Pugh this truck. You didn't have the cat's eye. Okay, there, there it is. Yeah, on the left hand side. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I like that 2736. Wait a minute, come on back. Well, that's not right. Huh. <laughs> there it is. That's striking to me. That is real wispy and Kind of like the veil nebula that you mm -hmm. the image where we are. <clears throat> so there's a vote for 2736. I'm not sure it's in his data set, but. Pencil nebula. Yeah. In that first one that I. Let's see, I guess somewhere. See. I want to look at his galaxies real quick. Whoa. Yeah, there's some. Yeah, that third one's striking too. <laughs> it's like an eye. Did I do something to the audio? I could barely hear you, Alan. Oh. Let's see. Um yeah, my microphone's on. Meryl say something. Testing, yeah, I hear Alan pretty well. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's on my end. Yeah, I'm here. See what I did. Yeah, I just said that NGC 1398, that's kind of striking too. <laughs> but all of those are really nice. Okay, I think I fixed it. There you go. Can you hear me now? Yeah. I can't. <laughs> I've got this little controller in my cord of my headset, and I, oh, gotcha. I leaned on a button. And... Yeah, the in NGC 1398, I think that one just looks like, a, like an eye, and that makes it kind of striking. And I was trying to figure out how it ended up looking like that, <laughs> spinning around. Fabulous. So, Gary, you said you you've seen the uh, NGC sixty three fifty seven, the Winter Wonderland. That's I'm sorry. You, did you say you've seen the sixty three fifty seven, the Winter Wonderland one? It's not not in person. No, no. Um, it's no, I have, have, have not seen that. Ro, Ro, the Roo Fiuchi complex, you can see, you can see from here. Um, but yeah, it, so so I was thinking that one, that one, because of that, as spectacular as it is, it was a little further down on my list. No, I, I've not seen or or taken a stab at uh, NGC sixty three fifty seven. It's so far since my last thirty day. I mean, it's really far since. Yeah. Oh, 
Okay, I'm through poking around now. Y'all tell me where to go. I've captured seven that we by by name were NGC number. All right. So why don't we um How do we want to do this? Well, do we want to pick a galaxy and then, then choose the nebula? So we got two galaxies, I think, that we mentioned, the, and then the rest of my nebulas. Yeah, I think that'd be great. I think we, I think we get at least, you know, I've got, we've got, uh, we've got a good cluster with Omega Centauri. We've got one good neb nebula in the tarantula already. Um, let's let's add a galaxy or two and another um, uh, nebula or two. I, we can. I'm I'm by the way perfectly fine with just one of each three. So give me one galaxy, one nebula, and one cluster. And Wait, can we start? So why don't we, uh, let's see, what was on that? Is there any, yeah. So the galaxies that we know he's got data sets, this and this, right? Out of the spreadsheet. It's not good. Uh, sorry. There it is. So we can we can mark this off. We have it already. Can I can I edit on this? Can I do anything with this? Oh, well, okay. Well, so Meryl, what do you want? I'm game for any of them. I, I, I know you are, but but what do you want? Well, if I if I choose to, I choose the galaxy of two fifty three, and then the the, the roll or Fucci. And Gary said you could get it. It's it's a it's south, but it's only minus nineteen deck. So we, but it's so faint, it's a nine to thirty. Yeah, it's, I'm I'm not worried about. It. I, I'd be fine with picking something we can actually see. Well, I'm just thinking. He was. I think Gary was saying we could get it here, and and uh, if we can get it here, maybe we have try it on our own stuff. With the, the 6357, the Winter Wonderland is kind of cool too. Yeah, yeah, I like that one. Yeah, I, I a couple couple months ago made a uh, made a stab at the. Um, kind of the, the right around on Antares uh, of the Rho Ophiuchi complex, and it's no nowhere near enough exposure time, but um, it it you you can tell what it was anyway. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. So what is but what was the designation for that? I, I, I what I looked at on the internet was it IC forty five ninety two sound right to you or? Um, for, uh, well, actually, let me, let me, let me take a closer look at it here and see for sure. Cause I, yeah, I, basically I, I had, I'm using just my little 180 millimeter, um, TPO ultra wide and, um, 
it had kind of uh, and Antares was kind of at the bottom, and then the you know the stars were Ophiuchi and the Nebula. Yeah, basically um, that kind of from the about the lower left quarter of that image was pretty much all I had. So I, I didn't I wasn't able to get the blue horse head and uh, the other stuff that was further to the right in in, in his image. So there would be some stuff there that that, that I wasn't able to get. Fabulous image. Isn't that the one he had three panels on? I think so. He's he's done a mosaic of that. Yeah, I, I think I saw that that this one is. Yeah. Okay, I gotta get back his to. His oh, so you think in the data set we would have to put the three panels, the panels together, for the mosaic, or you think he's already done that? Well, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be a good skill to, to learn is making mosaics. Yeah. Yeah. I've not had good luck with those, me personally. The latest version of uh, the ASI Air Pro software is supposed to facilitate controlling the telescope to do that sort of thing. It's not the imaging necessarily, it's how you blend them together. Fix Insight has a, a script or a process that to merge, but it's still, you've got to get rid of all the artifacts that are left from the merging. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's see. That's Well, these are his pictures and what I'm looking for, I guess, are, uh, okay, data sets. Three panel mosaic. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, see, he, he doesn't even put them here. You have to send him a request to get a copy of total 16 hours, four hours per panel. That's amazing. He got that kind of data. And yeah. Short, short time. And is it giving you the mosaic or is it giving you the components of the mosaic? Good question. Four hours, four hours per panel. It's a good question. Uh, well, it was take. Uh, okay, so it was taken with uh, one shot color camera. So this isn't going to be quite as high a resolution as we're seeing with these others. Uh, where is the trance? Let me see what it said about that. Okay, this says it's so we got L, R, G, and B, uh, Gen two, H, A. So there's there's oh, silicon, yeah, Gen two, H, A. I see that's hydrogen alpha, silicon, and oh. Uh, O3 and what's N2? I've never seen that before. I don't know that one. So <laughs> there, and, which explains all, you know, the 70 something, I mean, the 90 files uh, that are there. So there's, there's like six 1800 second exposures in each one of these filters. They're 1800 seconds. Each. Oh my God. 
which is 20 something minutes, right? Uh, uh, 30 minutes, 30 minutes. Uh, I guess you have no airplanes going overhead or <laughs> <laughs> because he's in, I don't know what this was taken where in uh, South Korea. New South Wales. New South Wales. Astrophysics 305 millimeter. Whoa. That's that's not a cheap telescope. No, I, I looked looked that up. Uh, you can find a used one a couple years ago uh, for about 20 grand. <laughs> okay, so we got two galaxies. We want to pick, pick a galaxy first. We got the two galaxies were 253 and then 1398, so when I captured. 253 and 1398. Yeah, that's, that was somewhere else you looked it up, I think. I got too many windows open here. And I'd also be in favor of doing, if you've really got all three categories done now, just getting a small number now, and then after some time processing it, decide what the next one wants to be. So you know what you yeah. what we're looking for in it. Mm -hmm. Oh, thirteen ninety eight. This was another one. Now, let me, is is that one of his data sets that he's selling? No, I think. Yeah, I think I was the one that mentioned that. But yeah, I, I definitely like the 253 better. <laughs> OK, all right. That is not one of his data sets, as it turns out. Yeah, I don't think it is. I didn't see it. No, because oh. it's. Uh, so there you have it. So I think we've got a galaxy. OK, NGC 253, everybody's good with it. Yeah. Yes. That's fine. Well, the Winter Wonderland is beautiful, but it strikes me as very similar to the trench. They're both beautiful, but. Well, and that, uh, let's see, which one was it? Let me get back to his site again. Um, what was the other one? That was uh, 60, 6357, that one right there. But, and on his site, that is, what does that look like data-wise? There it is. The lobster six three fifty seven right yep so this is uh 16 hours and 30 minutes rgb hydrogen alpha silicon and o3 so this is six filter sets uh you know that one that was um taken was a color camera. Um, you know, I might, I might have to just buy that one myself because, you know, that's, I don't have a monochrome camera. I have color and one shot color and uh, I need to learn how to process from it, right? Oh, that's the one though, it's three panels, wasn't it? That's what that was. Did he say what, what filters he used on it? You can still use filters with color. Here's what I found. Doesn't look like he uh, indicates. Well, why would he use filters on a one-shot color? Uh, to separate out the components of an nebula, I guess. I, well, he probably has clear enough skies. I need it here because of my... Portal seven resolution, right? Portal negative or something like that. 
this this is more I mean I'm not sure what the QHY 600 is but I've got the uh, uh, ASI uh, uh, 071 which is essentially the same chip that's in my Sony DSLR uh, it's an ASPC size chip The HY600 is an $8,000 camera. <laughs> well, well, mine wasn't that uh, much. <laughs> mine was, uh, I think, about $1,500. That's a full frame. I mean, it's, it's a good camera. Oh, uh, it's a full frame. Okay. Okay. 60 megapixels. Wow. 3.76 micron pixels. Wow. Pix really? Those are small pixels. I think you've got to have very high resolution there. Yeah, I think you are. Okay, so we got the Galaxy. <laughs> so what else we want to get? One more Nebula or what? Yeah, okay, we, let's see a show of hands for the Winter Wonderland. I mean, is there anybody for that? I'm good with that. Okay, that's one. Okay. How about, how about the Ro or Fuji? Zero on that one, okay. Um, the 6726. Let's see, which one was that? Let's... You may have to look it up. I just did a few of those there. So. Oh, yeah, that's a cool one. Yeah, I like that. that one. And the one he had had the cluster in it, too. Okay. Let's, uh, how, how about 6726? I mean, he's a Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Uh, got the double star as well. We've got it. We've got a majority. So yeah. All right. Yeah. Let's see. NGC two fifty three and Nebula sixty seven twenty six. All right. We'll re we'll re we'll revisit this later on as we get these finished up. So I guess we we'll see that one is LRGB HA. Oh, I'm sorry. I wasn't paying attention. Um, 16 hours through the 305 millimeter astrophysics. How many filters? Four? Yeah. LRGB HA. So that's five. Yeah. Um, All right. Uh, do you need us to chip in on the cost of these? Are we handling financing of it? Uh, we've got it for now. We want to pick up some more later. We'll uh, we're, we're covered for now. Yeah. Let me let me know. All right. I think I think the thing that I worry about is it, is is the fixed inside cost for people that aren't ready or everybody good on the fixed inside cost. Yeah, I am. Well. <laughs> I wasn't at first, but I went ahead and dove in. <laughs> well, that's that would be. This is only if you're going to get into using Pixite Insight for your images processing. So, and, and I guess Merrill, what you're trying to do is you're for these uh, sessions where we get together. You're going to probably pull up your uh, Pix Insight screen and go through it, or. Rick or me or somebody. I mean, no, we, we, uh, we got to plan with this kind of the other night when we were uh, talking about putting together what we were going to try to do tonight. And uh, I mentioned to the others that I'd went ahead and bought uh, Omega Centauri just because I, I couldn't help myself. It was it just, you know, I had to do it. One of your so, <laughs> It was only $38, <laughs> which is yeah, nice. Yeah, it's, it, it really wasn't... Uh, wasn't a big deal. So uh, uh, I did, and uh, and 
you know, it, it looked like, uh, you know, basically these were the data files, right? They got uh, six red, six green, six blue. And I stacked those and uh, came up with some uh, master light files, red, blue, and green, and then combined them and basically came up with this. And that took no time at all. And, uh, but then, but then at this point, I'm kind of stuck. I don't know what to do next. You know, this was. That's that. You remember you had the green background. Oh, that's right. That's right. It's been background neutralized. Why, why don't you just go ahead and do the color calibration and just show them what it looks like. Just cre recreate that one. Just you know, close that one down and recreate it. So I want to combine those three. Color, color, color combination or channel combination, sorry. There you are. And as I recall, I... Uh... Nope. Whoops, yeah. got to pick the right color. That always helps. <laughs> Okay, and let's see if I recall, I dragged this uh, oh, no, no, circle. Okay. The, the, the global right there, yeah. Okay, now, now you want to do the screen transfer, which is in the upper right hand corner, second icon over. Next one, that's it. That's the auto stretch. Yeah, okay, that that's was what, the point I got to. Right. And so what do we do next? Back, background neutralization. And that one you just drag, drag the carrot over. That's, that's where you were at image four. Yeah. Now, okay. the, the data, if you, if you zoom in on the, the background, see what, show you, look at the noise in the background. They're just virtually, isn't it? That is, that is. There, there's some, there is some, but not. Yeah. I want the background to be darker though. Well, we haven't stretched it or anything. It's it's just whatever that the screen stretch in an automatic. It'll be darker when it's done. But you're really zoomed in there. Yeah. Now now what you what you if you had if you had gradients, um, um, you would do you know the dynamic background extraction to get rid of the gradients or light pollution or whatever, but I just don't see any there. In fact, I tried it both ways, with and without, and I, there's no discernible difference. Um, so what I, would, what I would normally do next would be uh, the, the color calibration, make sure it's the right colors compared to the, the sun. And, and do you think, I see some little lines at the bottom in the left side, do we need to crop it just a little bit? Yeah, good good point. Because I was, um, I was uh, talking to Rick when I, like, I was so quick, quick and dirty to get get him that one. <clears throat> I didn't notice that, that there was what you just showed there, so I sent him to it that way. But I just told him tonight. I said I, I, I cropped it the next next go around. So uh, color calibration, yeah, close it. That's not the one we want to use. But Alan makes a good point. Why don't you, why don't you do? Uh, the dynamic crop be, would be next. It, there you go. Can I close these other windows? Sure.
So how do you use this? Well, just make it, just, it'll make a square or a rectangle. Just put it over there and draw where you over the picture or go over the image and then you kind of drag a square across it. You'll draw, you'll, no, you'll, no, no, no. Just draw, draw where you want to head inside. That's it. There you go. Get as much as you can without the bad stuff. Okay, you want to come in? Okay. You're being awfully close, good. <laughs> so, am I being too close? I think so, but that's okay. Okay. There you go. Just make sure you don't. There you go. And then that, that one you just execute the, the check mark or, or drag it over there, either one. Okay, now, now you're ready to do the photometric color calibrations. Uh, remember how we did that one? No. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's all right. We'll go, we'll go through this. What you have to do is load up one of, just one of the the raw images and let it let it get acquire the, the coordinates from it. So you open up your main folder. And I've and I found instead of going to the file open, you can double click on the screen and it pulls it up too. <laughs> A lot easier. Say it again now, Alan. So if he, instead of what he's doing now to find the picture uh, that or the photo. You can double click on an empty space on the screen as long as you're in the pick, pick sense like window and it will and it will call up the same uh, oh, dude I mean I'm learning something here so it, it took you right there well oh, that's wow. great just any one of them where did you learn that I've been doing using Pixit right for years yeah. Well, I'm watching, watching one of those videos one day. I saw somebody do it. <laughs> That's great. Okay, so I opened a red. Okay, now, yeah, now hit acquire. There you go. It should. Okay. Now you now you can close the red down, and then drag drag it over. All right. Which what I do. I drag the image sure. or drag the either one. I mean either one. You can either drag it over or just hit the square. Yeah. That'll work. I like it when the software is smarter than me. <laughs> I also like software that bothers to tell you what it's doing to you. Whether you know whether it's telling you or not. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, if you you can look at this and tell pretty quick what it's what it's doing. A heavy duty master. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> so, oh, I'm sorry. 
So this is processing against some other data sets too, right? The way I understand it, it looks for the light that's consistent with what we would see under our sun. Okay. So that's that's what's what we see. So I think you're done. I mean, you can close all that. Your, your image has been calibrated to. You can go ahead and close that now if you want to. Okay. Now, now you need to stretch it again. <laughs> Do I close this or leave this open? You can close it. Next, next one over. Oops. Now, now what I what I would do at this stage was is to saturate. And this, this is still linear. Color saturate, color saturation. And I've been doing that right at the end. At the end of what year? What would, would you say at the end? Okay, like it's almost the final thing that I do before I say I'm done with the image. <laughs> I uh, do it nonlinear. Oh, oh, well, I, you can do it several different times. You do it nonlinear, you can do it linear. I mean, it's stretched as well as the nonlinear. So you do a couple. You know, I do a couple more. That's fine. Just execute. Execute it again. I just execute again. So, and you can hit the little X in the bottom right corner to get it flat again if you wanted to do that. Gotcha. Thanks. There you go. You're adding, you're adding some color there. Okay. I see. I see what you're doing. Yeah, that's a good place to stop. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> what what I almost always do is use the mass stretch. You can use this histogram stretch if you want to. The mass stretch uh, is. is better on the stars in my in my estimations, it makes them smaller. Where's that button? Well, go ahead and close. Well, I, what I would do, on, no, no, don't close it. Go to the next one over. You can just do, go to the next. See where the X is. Oh, uh, get that one, and that just that just shades it down, so it gets it out. Uh, of the right. Okay. Because yeah, you'll use that again. You know, go to mass, mass stretch. Ah. I haven't used that one. Okay. <clears throat> you need to get a preview. Let's see it. The best thing to do is start off with just the default. Okay. You not you not do a preview? No. Okay. Upper go clear to the top toolbar. Left. Keep going left. So right under workspace. Okay. Yeah, there you go. And click on it. Click, no, no, not that one, the next one, right there. And then, then you want you to do is go down in the, in the back, uh, background there on the, on the image and draw, draw a square, I mean, or that's good. I just, it's just getting a sample of the background. And now, now you, you, uh, you see it says background reference. Yeah, on the yeah, yeah. Click on that and you, and it'll, it'll take you to the drop down menu again. Okay, look for look for the preview. Okay. All right, all right. and then, now you just execute. <clears throat> hey guys, I'm gonna sign off. I've got our first clear night since I got my scope. I'm gonna get a few things done before it gets too dark to get it set up. You must be. Way west because it's it's cloudy rain. <laughs> so we're in Houston, Texas. So it's it's. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. We've got All plenty right. of rain, but it's it's the past week. I guess you are, are way west of me. <laughs> Scott, have, have a good evening. Good Bye. luck. Happy Bye. first light. Take care. Yeah.
so Alan, you say you've not used mass mass used it. It it you could do it. It just it treats the stars better. In, in my you said you were having trouble with one of the images um, getting small stars. Right. This is the way you do it. Okay. Now what you're doing, you're o you're overstretching it. So go back to the upper right hand corner. Not that one. The next one to the left. To the left. Okay. That takes it out of the. There you go. Now I stretched. And you can get rid of the preview by just you can left click on the, the tab on it. No, no, the tab on the left hand side of the image. Sorry. See, it says preview one on it. Ah, so left, that's true. Left, left click there. I, I mean, right click. Well, no, no, whatever. You want to get deleted. I'm sorry. Delete. Just get it out of your way. Okay. <laughs> Now you, you, you start to see a nice color. Um, now what you want to do is, is do the histogram. See what it's done is it's, it's basically shrunk, shrunk, shrunk the uh, stars to really nice, small. Uh-huh, okay. And it's still linear here. This is nonlinear. That is nonlinear. That's nonlinear. It's, just, it's as though you did the, the histogram but it doesn't, some process they use masks to cover up the background. I don't know exactly the math behind it, but I do know that it really aids the ability to keep your stars small without bloating them. Okay. Okay, so what's next, you said? I, I'd go to histogram. There you go. And then um, on the lower right hand corner. There you go. And, and then check, use the check mark. And what that does, it, it tells it tells that process that you're going to be using the image you're working on. I mean, it just identifies the click. It. Okay, so now you have the histogram of. Image. Yeah. You, know, you, you can stretch it a little bit, but that's good. You want to click the little blue circle to do that in the preview? And yeah, it's either way. So what what Alan's teaching you there is that you can look at a, a very close approximation of the work without doing any damage to the original. Well, what do I want to do? Do I want to grab this bar and start moving it or not? Do it. Learn, learn what it looks like. Bring it bring it to the left and watch your image. Watch the preview. It's brightening it up. Oh, that looked pretty good. <laughs> like it was. Yeah, pretty much is. Yeah. So that kind of, that mass stretch does it for you, puts it where... It really depends on the subject. Okay. Yeah. You, okay, you, now don't do that yet. No, don't bring in the one on the left. You're going to clip off a little of that blue. Oh. Yeah, bring it to, to the right and see what it does. Just show you what it does. It starts darkening. This is how you get contrast. Mm -hmm. you, you, you clipped 82,771 pixels. But out of 60 million, I don't think you're going to miss them. <laughs> Where did you see that? You, know, you don't want to go too far. Right. But you, got, you, got a, you, want a, you want a nice knee there at the bottom. The blue is really so prevalent. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's neat. I think I, I just then just execute it. Then. What, or what, whatever you feel comfortable with. I'm just looking. It just yeah, just play with yeah. That's the neat thing you do. Is play with it, and, and then you learn. So I see that we have RGBK selected there. Can you go in and adjust the histogram to any of the individual channels there? Yes. Yeah. They, what I typically do, if they're not in a line like this, this is almost perfectly aligned. 
I'll I'll mess with the individual channels to their vertically aligned, and that really gives a good balance. Right. And then when you open that preview image, I guess to make it apply to the the main image, you have to do the the blue triangle to drag it over to the main image. Yeah, or or hit the square, either one. No, no. Yeah, that's it. Where we'll do it too. That, ex that executes or applies it. What you did there. Okay, you can close your uh, close that down. Well, that's not quite what you did, but it's getting there. Well, I, I think what I, I can't remember what I, I think may have used some. <clears throat> what you really want to do in my my estimation, you want to brighten the. Um, stars a bit. You can do a little more saturation. Uh, you can do some curves, the, the curves transformation. And you want the, I, for my taste, and, I, and I'm seeing it through uh, Zoom, so it's not as good as what right. I saw. But I would say you need to darken the background. Yeah. If you if you really wanted to protect this the, the stars, you'd create a mask. But we're just messing with it now, so I wouldn't worry about. It. Just go to go to go to uh, processes and curves. Curves. C C U R V E S transformation. Down down to that. Uh, almost there. You go. Now, hit the hit the check mark in the lower right hand corner. Okay, now see now see the same histogram, and you and do the do the preview, which is the open circle. And you can expand that. If you hit the plus, it hit the plus at the very top of the real preview. Yeah. Then, yeah. Ah, okay. I learned something else new. All right, or several things new. So so you can. Uh, um, Great. Just mess with the curves now. Yeah, I kept trying to drag the windows bigger and make it bigger like that. <laughs> it's perfect. Is there a reset button? Yeah, the lower right hand, always the lower right hand corner. See, I, I can't see what you're doing because they, they maybe I need to move my, can I do that? Can I move this out of the way? But you're on the blue channel right now. You're not. You're, stri yeah, you're strictly on the blue. Just go, just reset it in the lower right hand corner. Okay. Now, now you get the whole RGB and just see what it does. Normally, what I do is a shallow S curve. Um, just put it, click on it where you want to anchor it. Okay, and then take the top and move it up just a little bit. So it just brightens it a little bit. Oh, yeah. And yeah. You do, I, no. I would say you're a little bit overly bright in, this, in the core to me, for my taste. This is where it gets to be. Your taste. Right. right. Uh, I'm starting to like it though. And you you can do saturation with curves. See that see the on that far right hand side has the see the S. Yeah. <laughs> now you can adjust that to do saturation across the spectrum. Wow. So do the two lines that yeah the first oh. line is the um, oh. oh one's the s curve you did before yeah, yeah that's the first one yes okay and that's the saturation that's playing with now so, yeah i can't tell any i'm not seeing a lot of difference i, I think what you're doing i think what's happening you're moving faster than your computer keeps up with the. Uh, 
Well, let's just see what happens. So what I would say, I want, I would want more blue in the core. So when you know which, like where the blue is, what where you want to drag? How do you know? But maybe maybe the easier way to do it is is to uh, why don't you reset that one and then we we ought to, we ought to do the uh, go back to your RGB K oh and then do the do the S curve which gives them some contrast and then go back to your channel I mean your your color saturation and you can just do blue. Okay, at the right, at what matches your taste. I mean, it, it's starting to look really, really good to me. Mm -hmm. okay. not, no, 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 you don't, you don't do that. Yeah. Just, just go ahead and execute it now. The square, the square, the square. Okay. All right, now, now would I go to your color saturation? Upper right hand corner, and you know how to do the reset it, and you put anchors. You can put anchors of each one of those across across the uh, the horizontal line there, and you want to drag up the blue, but you you don't want to drag it all the right. I mean, you know, go ahead and drag it up, but you want to you want on the either side of it. You want to unless you want if you think about the color scale down below, that's what you're that's what you're amplifying or or de-emphasizing. See. see what that's doing is just drag, I mean you're gonna when you execute that, that's well that's okay. You're looking at preview, right? That's preview, yeah. yeah. And so you can um, how do you know that that's the preview image you're looking at with it being wild like this? Uh, I guess you can't question. see the top of it that says preview anymore. Uh, just it's just the way it's okay. Yeah, first of all, you can see the 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 the, the orange circle has been just highlighted. I mean, <laughs> I keep trying to move my mouse to to show, <laughs> to show me. <laughs> yes, yeah, there I can. I don't know how you know. How, how do you shrink down? Oh, you go to the the bottom left corner and shrink it down again. Is that what what you do? Well, are, are you talking? Oh, okay, I'm I'm confused what the question is. Oh, I, I was trying to think of how to tell that that's actually the preview that you're working in. Well, right, look at look at the color color saturation. See the orange circle. Okay, click on it. Okay, now, now you're looking at the. Okay. Or, that's, that's, that's how you tell. One's, one's active and one isn't. Okay. So that's that's got the, the changes you you made there. And what you're doing there is de now you're emphasizing blue and Now, what that's it's a preview of, of, the, of nothing because you're not you're not amplifying or de-emphasizing. Yeah, I see. Okay. It's going to take some practice. <laughs> well, you can't hurt it. I mean, you can't hurt it. Yeah, that's you can you, back up step, right? I'm sorry. You can always back up steps, right? Well, yeah, if your lower left hand corner is the history explorer. And, and choose the what was the name of the what, under the images image five. Yeah. Just do the history explorer again. Uh, Where's the history explorer? You closed it. Uh, I used you, uh, under view. Go up to view on the toolbar. I think that's where you find it. Yeah. Uh, da, 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 explorer windows. Uh, look at look at explorer windows. 
an expanded history history explorer down. There you go. Ah. Now select your the image. Under, under view select, there you go. And your image five. And there's all there's all the things you've done to it. All right. Does can can you like you if you're gonna stop here and go on another night? Can you save that and come back yes. to you? Yes. How? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> save. Um, I think save project. Okay. Okay. What What I do, Alan. Every step of the way, I do saves of the work so i can always recombine them and and, uh, and and that's what that's what i've been doing if you if you looked at that last i think it was in 13 image that i put up it has every uh step i took as part of the file name and then i saved each step <laughs> okay i'm able to create directly right yeah, i think you know, i think you told me to that you're doing that and that's what i did and Takes up a lot of space on the computer, but it, but you can go back to where you need to. Well, and what I find myself doing is I'll go down to the endpoint and say that's not what I wanted to. So I'll, I'll go back partway through where where I started and then do it again, and maybe do things in a different order. I mean, you you got local local uh, histogram equalization you can do the multi. Um, like you, there's all there's all other other tools you use. Curve, yeah, multiple. <laughs> and it really, this is so un noisy. Uh, but I'd be doing noise noise reduction along the way. And if the stars were looking like they were getting too big, I do the morphological transformation, start reducing those. And and all along the, the way. You, you're using masks to protect the data that you want to, and because you, you don't want to, you, you don't want to bore. What well, basically a noise reduction bores it. I mean, it's a Gaussian blur or something, some mathematical. Um, yeah, I definitely need to learn more about the the masks. I do. I did have that uh, loaded that star net onto the fix insight. Uh, uh, have played with that once or twice. There you go. So, um, but it doesn't it doesn't like way Windows does a lot of crappy stuff with uh, files and you know, directory locations and alias and all that kind of stuff. So, but there's all kinds of things like creating clones and, and the previews and how you use previews and we're. Those are all the steps we we're going to do over the next few months. Yeah. All right. Great. And this one, this one here, actually was a very simple because it doesn't have all the nebulosity we have to protect and worry about. Um, but and it's just a, the I mean the quality of the data is <laughs> only for only ninety minutes worth of data. It's just amazing. Yeah. So. Uh... What's the name of that program you use to put the uh, uh, spikes on the stars? Oh, it, it's a. I have an old, old, old copy of Photoshop. Oh, and, okay. It's a plug-in. It's a plug-in, and yeah. what I do at the very end, I, I just, that's just one of my quote-unquote signature touches. <laughs> They're not real, <laughs> but yeah. I, the shark I, cute. And you just you have to pick. So I mean. It, I forget Neil Corbani is the guy who wrote the program in Photoshop, uh, and it's just a it was like twenty dollars or something. <laughs> and so it's so I did what, what I do when I get to the point where I'm done with it, fix fix inside. I will take I will take convert it to a TIFF, and then I, then I'll transfer it over to Photoshop and do the real finishing touches. Okay. Well, you remember, remember, Rick, you brought you you bought that um, was it uh, Star Arizona? Yeah, 
Yeah, but I don't you know, I don't have Photoshop and I never could figure out how to get it to work with GIMP. I thought I could, but uh, well it's it there's some those are some tools. And what I end up doing, I just experience just make a copy of it and, and then uh, uh, so just so y'all know, so this is what Merrill produced out of the data set the other day and sent to quick and and this is what we're talking about his uh, uh signature star spikes it looks good it does look good it look fabulous this is now like i said it's my uh it's my uh it's it's my uh, uh wallpaper on my ipad and on my desktop computer and <laughs> Okay. Yeah, all right. I Googled to try to find that to so where to put those on the stars and end up being another program to buy. And I said, I'm not, I'm still not learning. Yet. <laughs> not doing it yet. <laughs> I've heard that people actually take strings across your, your end of your telescope and you can create them that way. Oh, yeah. And yeah, but, I saw that. It's a, it's a universal create. You create them on all, all stars. Right, right. Okay. Well, I mean, this is just something quick and dirty. What I would, I think what we need to do now is to um, pick which one are we going to take tackle as a group first, and then start start from the the, the understanding of the calibration files, and then do some of those and do the stacking and just step by step with that, and spend an hour on it, and then next next month. Why don't we? Uh, we can all work on it in between. Yeah, absolutely. Why don't we send out a little questionnaire or something once we get our list, you know, so say, okay, this is our list. What do you want to start in? Which which object you mean? Yeah, which object. Right. Okay. Well, the, the two we – so we have Omega Centauri, we have the Tarantula, we have NGC 253, and NGC 6726. So I'll, I'll get. I'll make sure we get the uh, okay. the last two of them. All right. And then um, we'll get the we'll data get sets and uh, figure we'll out where we want to start. Okay, but do we want to start on the tarantula next? Uh, tonight? No, no, no. <laughs> next? Well, I, no, no. let's let's get yeah. Anne's take on that. I'm gonna bet that's what she votes for. I bet she will too. But I mean, what, yeah, what, I'm just thinking, would it be good to? To go through this one to the end. I mean, we're real close to the end right now, I would guess. Since it's the simplest of the three, I would assume. <laughs> just yeah, well, I, it, yeah. right? You just yeah. play with this until you get it where you want it. Yeah. Well, do, what would you do different? I mean, this, I, I would say if I, if I were doing it, maybe the background just be a little bit darker, but. Yeah, I agree. Not close. Okay. Like, would you? Go through the uh, uh, ships. I can't think of the name of some of the processes, the deconvolution or any of that kind of stuff with this type of. Oh, no. No, no I don't think so. No, I, de deconvolution normally is applied only to the luminance. Mm -hmm. Normally. Um, this didn't have any luminance. We didn't have as much. Oh yeah, this, that's right. This was RGB, okay. and this really isn't the full spectrum of all the light because the luminance covers all the R, G, and B, but there's a lot of stuff in between those, one of the filters, you know, on either side of the filter. So, but it, it's still a, an amazing image. Yeah, and it may be one of the reasons you've got so little noise, or contributor to the fact that you've got so little noise. I think it's got really good equipment. <laughs> <laughs> okay. when i started in photography I had more than one person told me the money goes in the glass There's no doubt about it yeah no doubt about it so yeah i, I would bet that ann would pick the um the trench right. oh. to, to, to start on and then that's fine with me too yeah. But, but, but we can just go, you know, just get started and go till we get tired and, and move on.
So is there anything else anybody wants to discuss tonight? Anybody done anything with guiding or uh, uh, anything? It's been cloudy since last month. Yeah. <laughs> I think I got out once, and I did get the new uh, version, the new firmware for the ASI Air Pro. And uh, captured some. Oh, and I, the other thing I did was I I added the uh, uh, light pollution filter, and I got some uh, excellent single color exposures. You know, no post processing, just something I could throw up on the screen real quick. And I was really tickled uh, with those results. I uh, shared them on our. I, I got an unrelated question. There's some, someone in our Zoom group it's named Janet. Janet, I've not met you. Are you there with us? I'm sorry. Say again. Well, there's a there on the the, the tiles with the people's pictures. There's one as Janet, and I I don't know Janet. Oh, uh, it was probably my wife. Uh, oh. <laughs> Okay. Uh, and she mm -hmm. she's telling me that our dog is uh, whimpering and crying, and that's my dog is old, and I love my dog very much. And when she's doing that this hour of the night, something's wrong. So I uh, I think I'm going to unless y'all have something else. You want to review this? I thought, was this the last time I went out? I think it was. I think that's when I got that. It's in 57. What and telescope did you have for that? This is my eight inch uh, Richie Creation, the Astrotech eight inch. Okay. Uh, it's, uh, and these are 10 minutes exposures. little bit of star going on in that but i mean i was amazed that the stars were this round with the amount of uh, uh as bad as my polar alignment was so are you guiding guiding those stars i mean the the, uh, the the asi air was uh, guiding so it's it's a little controller that works with the camera and the drive and hmm. uh takes care of all that on board so mm -hmm. controls the camera controls you can set up a, a shooting schedule you can tell it takes so many flats if you had a filter on there filter wheel it would flip the filters for you all that stuff well uh y'all are welcome to uh continue on but i'm gonna uh, go ahead and go silent here and go check on my dog so why don't we do this rick I, I, you and i talk in the next couple of weeks about the next lesson absolutely and we'll engage Anne at the same time and how right. you want to join the subgroup uh, so okay well I, i'm ready to call it night all right well Great. listen um uh our um slack group is open to everyone if you want to uh, be a part of that. Send me a request and by email. Otherwise, uh, send me an email if you want to need anything, and we'll do what we can to see that you get it. And otherwise, y'all have a good evening, good weekend, good rest of the weekend. Happy Memorial Day and uh, clear skies. Y'all take care. All right. Good night. Thanks. Good night. Hi, everybody.